All right, in this video I'm going to show you where the focal point is for a concave lens. Remember that the focal point tells us where parallel lines all meet, and by parallel we mean to the optic axis, and remember an optic axis is the axis that runs through the center of all of the of the lens and the center of curvature, the midpoint of the lens. So here's our lens. Notice that it is a concave lens and that it caves and that it caves in in the middle. And if I take the front surface and I trace it around so that it made a giant circle, I might say that the center of that circle was about here. And so my optic axis running through the center of curvature and the center of the lens and coming out the other side, and that gets me my optic axis. So then if I bring in these parallel rays, where are they going to meet? Okay, so like the convex lens, this one's a little tricky because the reason that light is bending with a lens is diffraction. So we've got to look at or sorry, refraction. So we've got to look at the refraction that happens at both surfaces here. We're going to assume that our optical system is in air, and we're going to assume that our lens is made out of glass, so it has a refractive index of 1.5. Let's make A bigger so that we can see what's happening at that surface. So here we have our parallel ray coming in, and for our car cave lens, we're going to put a normal on it that's going to look something like this. Now here, we're going from a refractive index of 1 to a refractive index of 1.5. So what we're going to see here is that my angle, since n is going up, my angle must be going down. So whatever this angle is, this angle needs to be even smaller. Oh, let me try that again. It should be on this side. It should be even smaller. And what we can see already is that our ray is bending up and away from the optic axis. But let's just look at the second surface as well. So here's our normal for a second surface. And now it's coming in a little bit like this. Here we're going from a refractive index of 1.5 to 1. So our refractive index is going down, which means our angle is going to go up, meaning that this is going to bend further away. So the, here the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction got smaller, so it pulled it up towards the normal. And here, the angle of refraction got bigger, so it pushed it further away from the normal. Both of those causing this ray to diverge from the optic axis or head up off into space. Alternatively, we can look at the bottom here, B. That shows us everything that happens at A. At B, I have one surface of my lens and the other surface of my lens. I have a parallel ray coming in. I have a normal that looks something like this. Again, going from refractive index 1 to refractive index 1.5. Here my refractive index is going up, which means my angle of refraction will be going down, which means this ray will bend closer to the normal. You can see theta 2 is smaller than theta 1, bending the refract bending or refracting the light away from the optic axis. Refractive index went up, angle goes down. On the back side of the so that's the front side of the lens, that's right there. On the back side of the lens, that ray is now coming in like this. And now my normal looks something like that. I'm going from a refractive index of 1.5 to 1, so my refractive index is going down, which means my angle is going to go up, which means this angle is going to be quite large out here. And so what that means is my ray is uh, headed away from my away from the optic axis again, so it's coming down. I'm going to do a little bit of erasing before I finish this up here. Let's get some of this stuff off the diagram so it's a little clear.
Okay. So what that means then is this ray is going to spread out or head away from the optic axis as well. Again, I'm not drawing these things to scale or getting these exactly right. I'm just giving you the basic idea and showing you why the focal point is where it is. So now, what you have to do is you have to look at these two rays and say, where are they going to meet? Well, one's going up and one's going down. They're clearly not going to meet. The real rays themselves are never going to meet. So when the real things never work out, it's the same thing. Light assumes, or everything assumes that light was traveling in straight lines. So we extend those straight lines back to figure out if they went on forever, where would they have met? And what we get here is a focal point. But since there isn't real light coming together to form this focal point, this focal point is what I do there. There we go. This focal point is virtual not real. No real light came there to make that. It's in front of the lens. And we see the same trend that we've seen in all of these other focal points. So hopefully we see that it's true all the time now. The focal point is around half way to the center of curvature. Again, it's an oversimplification. It depends on what the exact shape of the lens is, if both surfaces are pointing in the same direction, what the refractive index of the material making the lens is. But it's a general rule that's sort of right. So that's where the focal point exists with a convex lens. You could put a whole bunch of other things on here and if you did the geometry perfectly you'd see that it works out to almost all of those rays coming to or all those rays coming to almost a pretty small point or almost the exact same point the focal point so that's a con did I say concave yeah concave lens